Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. So we're actually gonna be going over a game that I had and I'm just gonna try to do like a little gameplay commentary over it and explain to you guys essentially like what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. And uh, hopefully you guys learn a lot from it and uh, really enjoy it. So let's kind of get right into this. Uh, one tip to, to do, by the way, is that when you're clearing both camps, obviously you wanna sort of like drag it out to dueling like we did. But when you're clearing both camps, make sure to always try to prioritize the green. Uh, after your initial set of AoE abilities, the green is going to heal up itself and like other camps around it. And so uh, by killing it first, the camps are a little bit easier to clear. So just kind of keep that in mind. Make sure you prioritize the green, you and your ADC. Uh, once we get to lane, Sylv has actually a lot of pressure and so does Medusa. So like we have a decent amount of pressure here and so we're just kind of using it. We After we clear the wave, we sort of just want to funnel the minions into their tower. Right, like the thing about the tower is that it... Uh, whenever it shoots a minion, will pretty much reduce the minion down to like one or two gold, maybe three gold at most. And that's like really, really bad. I think it's like one gold, but that's like really, really bad for them. That that reduces a lot of their gold. XP still stays the same, but their, their gold gets reduced. On these waves, I just kind of want to... Um, and by the way, uh, all the BM this game is friendly BM. I'm, I'm dual queued with the Wukong. So um, a, a lot of the people in this game are... Like, we're, we're all, like, GMs or masters, so um, we all kind of, like, know each other and play with and against each other a lot of the time. So this is a, you know, pretty high-level game, uh, to say the least, and uh, so hopefully you guys will learn a lot from it. But, in any case, back to the regular gameplay. Here, I'm just kind of, like, pressing in on the wave. We have a lot of pressure. Like I said, I have a lot of healing, uh, which is really, really good. So uh, I just kind of want to eat their abilities a little bit, like, eat the care on one best I can, make sure Dusa doesn't get hit, and... Um, uh, kind of position like in front so I, I eat everything the other thing too is that my general rule of thumb for shield buff is that support should typically get the first one maybe even two shield buffs depending on how the lane's going uh, and then like give it to your ADC after that but you're going to be eating a lot of the damage and, and one on the early game so like the shield buff is definitely the best thing for you um, so we had this pretty sick pull in the Stewie right there unfortunately didn't get him but oh well that's fine uh, after shield, the, with or without Wukong being here, of course, after shield, we, we just go ahead and get the purple. Uh, fun fact, I think... Well, I say fun fact, and then I say I think. I think that little purple harpy right there that you get is worth more golden XP, actually, than the shield camp currently is. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, maybe somebody can, like, fact check me on that. Uh, but that's, like, something cool to kind of keep in mind. So if the enemy has a lot of pressure and the enemy's getting shield buff, then... Uh, you guys can go ahead and split the Harpy and actually get a little bit more um, XP from it. Now, the Shield Buff is still better overall to get, even if that is the case, because Shield Buff is obviously giving you the Shield Buff, which is huge. Uh, typically, I would try to invade whenever I can, so you always want to be aggressive, uh, best you can. But because it didn't really seem like a good invade opportunity, we just went ahead and uh, got our own buffs, which is completely fine and backed. Uh, one thing I also want to point out, too, is that when I'm playing Sylvanas, I used to level the two. I know some of you guys might be two maxers, some might be one maxers like me. But I used to level the two, and then I saw Quig sort of leveling the one in SPL, and I, I thought to myself, like, let me give this a try. Like, let me see what's going on. Let me see if I like this. So I started leveling the one. I actually like it a lot more now than leveling the two, maxing the two first. So I'll typically max the one, then max the two. Reason being is because the two has more proc shred on it, or you get increased proc shred, which is insane. Uh, so, like, you're... Like, both you and your carry are just doing a lot more damage overall. Super sick pull onto the Hachi. And then, um, honestly, that Charon ult was really, really good. That was a really, really good Charon ult. Uh, unfortunately, Medusa ends up dying. We do kill him, and then, unfortunately, we get ganked. So that's just, like I said, unfortunate. Maybe Wukong can get the kill. Let's see. Kind of, like, forgot how this game went. Besides us winning. Haha. -ha. All right, guys, I'm not, listen, that's not a spoiler. I'm not going to post up a game that we lose, of course. Why would I do that? All right, that's not a spoiler. Of course we are. It's about the process, all right? It's about the process of getting to that point. It's about learning, having a good time, being entertained, all that jazz. So, no, 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 I didn't spoil. We all knew that we were going to win this game. Um, but, yeah, so Thebes, uh, I like to go Thebes first on just about almost every single support build. There might be a build here or there that I don't go Thebes first. Might be a game here or there. But I, I recently made a tier list video on items. And I put Thebes in A tier. And I was honestly debating putting in S tier. Because I think Thebes has just been like one of the best items in the game. Hands down the best support item in the game for, for years at this point. 
And I mean, it's just so good, right? It's just so easy to stack. It's very simple. Uh, you get an insane amount of prods from it. And you also get really good amount of HP and also the HP five as well. Um, you don't really think about the HP five, but the HP five from all the way from T1 to T3 of it uh, really, really helps you out, especially during laning phase. So it's super nice to have. Uh, I don't know where the hell that pull was going. I got to talk to to past me because that shit was crazy. But yeah, so we have Thebes and obviously, you know, we just want to stack it. want to keep maxing our one here best we can. Uh, shield buff up? No, it looks like shield buff is down for a little bit. I want to try to make, if I'm, if I am going to make any play at all, I want to make it onto the Hachi. Both supports are pretty much looking at the enemy carries right now, but uh, I do more damage than the Charon does, right? Like, we're, we're kind of just like, I wouldn't say like we're bigger, because uh, we're not, but uh, I do more damage than the Charon does overall, especially because I'm maxing the one. So if I can get a decent amount of damage off, uh, do so can actually sort of like go in there for, for the kill. So you, you kind of have to like look at who you guys are and whatnot. Uh, it can get a little confusing sometimes, but most of the time, like you should be, that was almost a really good wave, by the way. Um, but most of the time, you should be looking for the enemy ADC, trying to block the enemy ADC from autoing your ADC, at, while at the same time damaging them and, and CCing them and setting them up for your ADC. If you have a good enough ADC player, uh, or an aggressive enough one, what they'll end up doing is they're going to run past the enemy support, especially if you can like set them up really well, and they're going to go into the enemy ADC and you know hopefully kill them. So... In any case, we're just kind of sitting in lane. One thing I do want to mention is that the way I like to play support a lot is I like to sit in dual lane. And you see a lot, like if you ever watch my streams, I'm doing it all the time. Obviously, I'm going to be doing it this game. I am already. We're six minutes in. I get asked sometimes, like, you know, when should I rotate out? Uh, I love to sit in dual lane for literally as long as I possibly can. And does it hurt the ADC? Not really. It depends, right? So, um, oh, actually, let's watch this real quick super 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 good alt there i get caught by that sometimes too um he thought he was out of range i i dude i feel that man i think i'm out of range all the time but really good alt really good follow-up by dusa that's what i mean by the way dusa can really like follow up because you can't really body block her her stuff also too one thing i want to point out before i continue on with my last thought is that med uh is kind of ass t1 <laughs> It's 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 honestly like kind of an ass for like T1, but the T3 version of Met is really really good. So uh, unlike like almost all the other relics in the game, I typically love to just buy Med like right after I get Thebes, like T1 to T3. I don't like to wait because T3 you're getting reduced cooldown, you're getting increased healing and mana back for both you and your ally. I mean it's just it's insane. It's it's like a completely different relic almost. So if you ever do end up going Med, oh we're trying to 360. Uh, if you ever do end up going med, I would go ahead and uh, make sure you just get T3 as fast as possible. But I sit in dueling a lot, mostly, um, just to complete the other thought, mostly because like I get a lot of farm from it. And if you're aggressive enough, which you should be, if you're sitting in dueling, you can't just like split the waves. You have to be aggressive towards like both side hook camps and also towards their buffs. So if you are aggressive towards all of that stuff, you will be out farming the enemy ADC. Your ADC and you will be outfarming them by like a, a shit ton by a ton so a good one thing i like to do is like bring um bring like two wards and then ward up their buff camps like hopefully i do it here uh whenever we get the chance good all by my dusa um we oh, oh there's a little challenge in stream that i if i hit a 360 pull i got like five gifted subs or whatever that's why i was doing that and and uh, we hit it there so we got the five gifted let's go baby but uh in any case though uh, so you have to try to invade buffs. I actually don't know why we did did not choose the invade there. So th this, I think, is a mistake by us. Um, we should always look to see if we can invade unless Hachi sort of got away. Maybe Hachi actually already went to the buffs there, which is probably why we, we chose not to invade. But um, yeah, like for the most part, you always want to try to be aggressive. That is how you're going to build your lead. Uh, don't be scared to, to die or, or be aggressive. Obviously, try not to die, but don't be scared. Um... But yeah, if you can do that, sit in dual lane. Now, the the couple times that I won't sit in, and you will just get way more farm than you normally would if you're rotating around the map. Plus, also too, your mid laner will appreciate it most of the time, um, just because they're they're able to solo farm. So if you're not like dual splitting with your mid laner, like they're getting a shit ton of solo farm now, and it's really really good. Now it depends the level of queues that you're at as well. Like I noticed that if say for example I'm queuing in the morning, not that many good players are queuing, so I'm getting paired with you know players on. Uh, lower MMR than I would normally play with or against. Okay, so What's happening is 
Also, I don't know why we give up that shield. Oh, okay, we just kill him. Nice, let's go. But what's happening is... Um, they, like, get rotated on. They don't really know how to deal with the rotations at all. Better players will know how to deal with rotations, but they, like, say don't. And um, then they'll start calling for you to rotate. If you're, if you're like, if you guys are popping off and dueling like we are now, resist the urge to rotate. You do not have to rotate as a support. Like, not in this current meta. Um, I try telling people a lot. A lot of people feel like they need to rotate. But, yeah, you do not need to rotate in this meta um, as much as you think you do. So just kind of, like, keep that in mind. Uh, as you're playing the game. Now, if I do get rotated on, say, by the enemy jungler a lot, say the enemy jungler is just coming over and being super aggressive and, and it's locking me down, I can't really camp my deuce out or I can't camp out my dual lane, then I will definitely back and I'll just start roaming the map. Uh, luckily, most games that doesn't happen. Most games, jungler, because like the thing is that the jungler is coming over to dual lane and your jungler is good enough, they should just be farming their camps, right? Because that means that their camps are up, so your jungler is going over there and now their jungler is losing a lot of farm. That's what should be happening. And oftentimes, I'll, if that does happen, I'll like ping the enemy jungler's buffs like, yo, get the hell over there and, you know, hit, get their farm. So, but uh, on the very few cases that that does happen, where the enemy jungler is um, just sitting in dual lane, like sometimes you just have to rotate out earlier than you want to because it's like you can't just sit there and, and keep taking all the farm because then you can't do anything about it. But this game that's not happening and we're super big. I'm also like hitting a whole bunch of pulls, so I'm, I'm feeling really good about myself. Um, we have a pretty decent ult here. I don't... Actually, was that a good ult? I think it was probably an okay ult. Um, I don't know if I would actually do it again. But probably save it for the Hachi. But no, I, I think the ult's fine overall. Uh, but yeah, we're just kind of scrapping here, fighting. We do have two nice little choke point wards. I, I know I said and I talked about like invading buffs and how you should be in, in most games I do. This game, we haven't really invaded any buffs, unfortunately. Um, well, I'm surprised I didn't hit. But I guess he like backsteps or something like that. But um, yeah, you just want to make sure you're invading for the most part. After you clear this wave, though, we just want to go back to ours. That was a little bit of a scrappy fight, but we do have two really good choke point wards, so we know if the enemy jungler is coming over or not. It's really, really good for us. And I think this game I'm also itemizing into. I kind of like started doing this little healing build strat because healing is really good right now in the current meta. Like super, super, super good. Um, Healers are just insane because people are dying faster, so you want to get that HP more online. So pretty much what I'm doing here is, uh, after Thieves, I think I'm going Mail of Renewal this game. And Mail of Renewal is going to give me... Oh, did he miss ult there? No way. That's crazy. But uh, Mail of Renewal is, is going to allow me to help optimize the build too, which is super nice. Nice rotation for my Ryzen. Uh, so they did end up getting gold, but the question is, the question always is, is it worth, right? So you got to think to yourself, like, okay, we got gold. I did not think that route was hitting, by the way. Like, not a million years did I think that route was hitting. But, um, they got gold, but then we just got three kills for it, right? Like, so it's actually not worth for them. Uh, if they're able to get out with their lives, then yeah, definitely, of course it's worth. But we just got three kills, not worth for them at all. Um, actually, now we have four kills. And all I want to try to do here is body block the Cthulhu. There's not really much I can do to the Cthulhu there besides like body block him. So that's what I was kind of trying to do in that little scenario. But now we obviously want to try to get out. I think I do end up dying here. I don't ever see a world in which I get out. Yeah, no, I, I do end up dying here to Cthulhu and whatnot. Also, one thing I'll do too is I'll kind of like skip past the desk a little bit so we don't have to like watch the gray screen. Okay, cool. So we skip that. Uh, we do itemize in the mail renewal. And now we can go into. I'm literally three, two, and four. We're literally positive right now. Looks like we're gonna go blink this game. So, oh, actually, we're not. Okay, good. Whew. I was gonna say so. I don't go blink every game, but uh, it looks like this game. I thought I was going to. So we got shell this game. Um, let me talk about the relics since we got a little bit of time to talk about this stuff. The reason why I went med is because, like I said, I kind of want to do a. a a big healing build this game and so i am gonna actually itemize into rod of asclepius that's kind of like where this build is going so rod of asclepius allows you to deal 30 percent more healing um it's passive has changed from what it was before before your allies you and your allies got like increased healing now it's like only you do the increased healing but you still do increased healing it's just only you get it now so with med and with mail of renewal and with my two i have a lot of healing this game 
And so that's why I want to go rob a sleepiest and just kind of like mess around with this build and, and see how nice it is. Um, that was the big reason why I went med. Now, I went shell uh, because I think shell goes well, like pairs well pretty well with backline supports. I could have also gone slow curse. Slow curse, I think, all, like would have been really, really good. But I like with med too because if I'm like healing my allies all the time and giving them a bunch of sustain like the shell adds on to that sustain in the middle of a fight as well so that's kind of like why i itemized also into shell but both my relics are kind of like these super supporty relics that soak up and help to soak up a lot more damage from my allies uh, so that's why i want them mine used to be will smith it might still be will smith so here i'm just kind of clearing with my Ryzen right now i kind of want to play around the mid uh mid lane here because pyro's up and i kind of don't want them to get pyro and there's nothing really on the right side of the map now i do see that my teammates are diving and i kind of go to help them out uh, over here and so that's why i'm kind of going over here we end up healing dusa this is where the shell also comes in handy as well again it's just so much like kind of burst sustain for my ally in that case like burst healing uh, and we actually end up getting her out which is huge so like i mentioned before the best thing we could do there right there is body block once your abilities are down uh, you can still play the fight really well by, again, providing warriors and body blocking best you can, both defensively and offensively. Kind of go back over and see if we can save this Arthur a little bit. And it looks like he's able to get out, which is super, super nice. So the big thing there is just popped my relics for the do sub, which was huge. And, oh wait, let's get past this. There we go. Look at that. See, that? I love, like, recording games because we can just skip past all this. But a uh, big thing there was, like, uh, get, sustaining my Dusa, and then uh, trying to be able to body block. Those are the two big things there. Body blocking didn't do too, too much, but it, it did a little bit. We end up getting Golf here, and they're kind of weak, so we end up actually kind of running this down. Plug this guy back in. Oh, yeah, I was kind of, like, annoyed with my team here because I had some nice plucks on this guy, and my teammates go to the left. Like, I was looking at the map, I'm like, cool, like, surely we, we play off me, and then they're all just kind of going to the left. I'm like, oh, okay. I think I hit him again, too, and, like, Dusa finally comes up, but uh, I was just kind of annoyed with this. Like, happy annoyed, you know what I mean? I wasn't, like, super pissed, but I was like, come on, guys. Two beautiful plucks, just come on. No, but it was a pretty good chase down. We got, we got like, one or two kills out of it, so it wasn't the worst. And we were also able to still go Fury, so this is, like, really, really good so far. We're up a solid 4 to 5K in 17 minutes, which is not bad, or about 18 minutes, which is not bad. Um, could be a little bit better, but I think it's also still really good. Uh, we back here into Pridwin. So one thing I've been telling people recently is like we're in a pretty cooldown centric meta. This means that like you really want to get cooldown online with like most of the characters that you're playing in support in particular. Um, it, it just feels so like the difference between having cooldown and not having cooldown right now is just night and day. I know it kind of like has always felt like that, I feel like, but in particular, like this entire season so far like cooldown just felt amazing and so uh your best cooldown options uh, honestly your best cooldown option is most likely pridwin on most characters that you play uh so i itemize into pridwin practically every single game at some point i typically either do it anywhere from second through like fourth is when i'll get it in between those slots depending on what i need but yeah pridwin's gonna be your main item also really like lotus sickle right now if i'm playing a healer like sylvanas um i'm not sure if i itemize in a lotus sickle this game but i'm assuming i do because i think like most games i do end up doing it but like sylvanas i like lotus sickle because it stacks with his two uh his two gives like prots and whatnot oh yeah so here was actually a really good fight um so i shell my raijin he's able to go through all of us and here i'm just literally cc'ing and healing him as best as I can. And this is where, like, the med and the shell kicked in, as well as, like, my two. Like, that was wild. Right there, all I wanted to do was sit with him and body block literally the best that I possibly could. And um, it works out. They dove him, and we just absolutely farmed him with cooldowns. Raijin also has low cooldowns himself as a character. So, like, I medded. I have low cooldowns myself because of my passive. So, like, I gave us back all these CDs, and I was able to sustain them. That's why, like, body blocking and, and doing your best there, like, being sort of an obstacle is, is why I try to really nail that down into people's heads when they're trying to learn and be good at support. Because support is, like, the hardest role in the game at a high level. Support is the hardest role to play in the game at the high level. It's the only role, at least in my opinion, but I think most people would agree with that, support or jungle. But support is, like, the only role in the game, in my opinion, where you 
sort of like have to be you have to play super selfless right like most almost every role can play selfless every role does play it to a certain extent but support that's like the entire job of your role i mean it's literally called support for a reason right and so like you have to set up for your allies you know engage peel uh buff your allies like look for look for the best plays like know when to do stuff you have to be looking focused on the enemy and your allies at the same time um and like there is a really really good example of like sort of being aware of like what my ally can do uh when i'm playing around him and stuff like that like how how to play around your ally essentially that that's so that that's like a really really important thing to to know and understand but um yeah so i mean like so far this game's going really really well uh we have our pridwin i was talking about like lotus sickle pridwin itemizing into that for cooldowns and i think like overall this was i think i do go lotus sickle like after compassion i should go compassion next unless i accidentally go heroism but uh typically i go heroism to more cc oriented comps they don't really have as much cc this game like crazy cc so i should just itemize into compassion this game and compassion mixed with my two and all the healing i have as well as my thebes aura is just going to make my allies so infinitely tanky it's insane um but yeah so so far i think we're, we're just kind of clearing i think we want to get ready for fg so fg is sort of the next play on the map gold fury is also good here too but you got to be aware if you guys do end up going for gold at say like this stage in the game uh and especially into a comp like with erlong and hachi like they could do fg so you got to kind of be aware of that and you don't really want to take that trade off unless like you you like absolutely have to unless like you're super far down and like you guys can't do fg anyways then like that's fine go gold but here, like, we kind of, I think we want to go into FG here very, very soon, so. That's why we're on this side of the map. Haji's in right, too, so this is actually a pretty good fight if we go for this. Like, we know Haji's in right because we just saw him on the wave. End up killing this guy. And here, I think, like, this is probably a pretty solid pyro call. So I want to go pyro here. And you, you remember that Sylvanas one, like, reduces prots, and that's not just on the enemy players, but also on to, like, everything. So when you, whenever you do, say, like, one the Pyro or one the FG or one whatever, uh, you're you're actually making you and your allies do way, way more damage to it. So here, by the way, um, I want to do FG. They end up walking up because I think they thought we could fight. I throw up a Surrender as, as kind of a, a joke. I'm not really angry, but... Um, yeah, so like here we just want to kind of do FG. Hachi's still splitting, uh, but Cthulhu sort of makes it hard, so we want to try to fight him. It's like FG calls are one of the hardest calls in Smite. Even like pro teams fuck it up sometimes. Um, but typically I think you want to fight unless you have like super Omega secure, like say a raw alt or a sill alt or something like that. And you know that it's like, hey, like they can't really steal this. Um, we're hitting really sick pulls here, by the way, but looks like we're just kind of getting gone on. We're a little bit spread out. I want to see if I can stick with this Dusa. Try to set her up for success. Um, but we end up getting the Erlong. It's important to note in these fights that you want to kind of stare at the map best you can. So right there, like, I know we're a little bit past this point, but when I went to pull the Erlong, I knew the Erlong was coming because I was sort of like looking at the map while I was playing a little bit as well. And so I like know the Erlong's kind of flanking. So we end up doing itemizing in the compassion, by the way. This is a really, really good build. But, like, this is a super, super strong build so far. I also want to go into, like, uh, I also want to go into uh, binding. That's it. I want to go into binding if I can, because the binding will stack with my one. My one is power reduction. Binding is power reduction, and it's all flat. Like, my allies do so much more damage if I just won somebody. So I love binding on Sylvanas. But, yeah, you just want to make sure that um, you're, you're kind of, like, looking at the map a little bit, being aware of what's going on who like is flanking you uh one thing i was talking about on stream and i think it's like really important to note here is that whenever you are like in a team fight uh one of your jobs is to see if you can peel off the jungler peel out the jungler and if the jungler is any good they're not going to be in the initial team fight they're going to be looking for a flank that's what the jungler wants to do because the jungler wants to obviously kill your carries and the best way to do that is on a flank depending on who they're playing Wait, really? but for any hyper carry jungler they're gonna be on a flank and so um, you don't know where they're going to be, you don't know where they're going to position, but you know where they're going to go to, right? Their goal is to kill your carries every single time, so you know that their endpoint is your carries. So if you're sitting around your carries, like staying with them and, and such, then 
uh, it makes it really, really easy to sort of like kind of, not really easy, but it makes it easier to peel the jungler off. Okay, so that alt right there, I thought it was sort of like immune the enemy CC, and I thought it, it kind of like would be better than, than it actually was, so <laughs> that was kind of unfortunate. That's why I randomly ulted. Yeah, I think like for the most part, it was, um, it was just kind of like a bad ult. Like I, I thought something else was going to happen there. It looks like they overchased here like crazy. That's the that's the one thing that you gotta watch out for too as like a frontliner is like try not to over like if you overchase it can be bad sometimes. We had we had some really good pulls here. But trying to live, collect their seeds. That's so honest. You want to make sure you get these seeds. They give you like really, really good cooldown. I think each seed reduces like a second on all your cooldowns, including your alts, which is absolutely insane. Like Sylvanas passive is goaded. So you want to just make sure you're walking over these seeds and getting them. You also get mana back too, which is huge. Oh, damn, we missed that. Here, I, I'm also, like, I'm not as worried because I have my ult, so I know I'm going to proc Perdwin here in a second um, if I need to. Like, he, he doesn't know that. I do, but here we go. We get a Perdwin proc. We get a nice little health shield. So that's why I was kind of, like, playing a little bit more aggressively than I normally would. If I did not have my ult up, if I did not have a Perdwin proc up, then I would not be playing as aggressively there. So I think that's a, a, a good point to note um, is I don't need to do that because of Perdwin. But yeah, so you just want to make sure, like, you're kind of, when you are sticking around your carries, like, you know the jungler's going to come from, like, a backflank at some point, um, unless the jungler's dead or, or you see the jungler in front of you. Uh, and so you always kind of want to be paying attention to that and be aware of that. Um, if you can lock down the enemy jungler, you will, not only will they say support diff, and it'll make you feel really, really good about yourself, but um, it's, it's like, night and day difference between... Um, how, between, like, winning and losing a team fight, I guess. Like, how hard or how easy a team fight goes. Uh, so, here, I don't know why Deuce isn't right. Maybe she is to, to kill this um, gold or whatever, but I'm getting an ult here. I see Deuce is behind me. So, I'm staring at the map, by the way, like, while I'm ulting there. I thought that was an okay ult because Deuce was right behind me. Um, looks like we didn't do as much damage as we hoped. Fortunately, we missed that pull. Can't hit them all. That's completely fine. Um, we have established a little bit of pressure, but I am down an alt, so I got to be a little bit aware of that. Um, but looks like these guys are splitting around too. Like the the enemy's kind of playing super, super. I don't know if they're like tilted or what, but they're playing super um, separate. Uh, so we end up killing him. Erlong actually has like a decent split push going down and left. Typically, whenever there's a split push going. This is mostly like support POV, but if you are a soul laner, typically if the split push is going and you have TP, you're the one that needs to back for the, the split push. That's what you need to do. Um, I see a lot of soul laners not really understand that. You should be backing for the split push. So after we get Oni Fairy, since we're already over here, we're just going to go ahead and... Um, oh yeah, I want to pick up this green. Green is really important, by the way. Like, Make sure you're picking this up like whenever you can. Uh, at any point. I know that's like more obvious than not, but it's very, very important. Oh, look, we're going to itemize into Ass Claps. Asclepius. Rod of Asclepius. AKA Ass Claps. So, after we get it, we're going to go back over here. This is the obvious play, right? We're just going to go to FG. We're super strong. It's 20 to 7. Um, we're actually not up that much gold looking at it right now, which is kind of crazy. We're only up about 3k, not even, which is kind of wild, actually. But, um, so maybe we're not as strong as I think we are. But, we are mostly winning every single fight so that's a really really good sign and after we pick up the bomb go ahead and here and just try to do fg if we can but looks like they kind of come in here so we we do want to take this fight again if if they give us the fight we want to fight cthulhu i think is actually really good right now by the way this character makes the game like really really difficult to play but we're just here sustaining our sustaining our allies best we can Super good pull onto the care on there, and we actually end up getting our Raijin out, um, which is really, really big. I think I end up dying here for it, but uh, if our Raijin lives, that's completely fine. Yeah, we end up dying, but our Raijin lives, so that's completely fine. See if we have the capacity. The same problem I had last game. Last game they had a bit more pressure. Okay, so now we're back over here. Um, so we want to still play on the FG, but the Cthulhu is is pretty much like a problem right so there's there's two ways to deal with this in my opinion uh and this is kind of what i was telling my team this game so the first way is that we have to either send past the cthulhu if we can 
I mean, like Raj and Medusa try to go through them, like try to go past them. Uh, and I'll, you know, try to heal them best I can there. Or the second way is to, um, is, is to pretty much kill the Cthulhu and have our like front line not play as far up, like not be all in. Uh, so here's Cthulhu again. This was actually a really, really big mistake on the Cthulhu's part. He started this fight way too early. So here we back up. And like I said, this fight was way, like, this was a really, really bad start to the fight for him because he just kind of started it way too early. So once Cthulhu alts down, we just say attack. Like we're just like, yo, we can we can win this fight now. Like Cthulhu no alt. So that's what we're gonna do. Then then all of a sudden, <laughs> my 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 fucking solar gets blown up. But we're actually doing a lot of damage here. So uh, we still keep stunning it. I was really worried when he died. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was like super super worried on this fight when he died. But we end up killing everybody actually surprisingly, um on that. And I think with that like, I don't think we end the game here, but. This is like a really, really good start. So here you actually have two options. One, you could just kill EFG. Oh, sorry. No, no. We do win the game here. I forgot. No, no, no. I made the call to end the game. And my Wukong said attack fire giant was super split. We, okay. So that, okay. Right there is 100% an end call. Like we always end. Uh, Wukong was just a little bit mistaken on what he could have done. But um, yeah, no, no. We, we, we do end right there. Cthulhu's the only one up. This That's 100% an end. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's completely fine. He just thought that Medusa wasn't up, and so the, like if Medusa wasn't up, he's right because we can't really tear through those towers. But because Medusa is up, everybody's super healthy. We we always end the the game right there. Uh, so we don't really have two options there. One option that we only have one option. The the only option there is to is to end the game. So that was a little bit of a mistake, but that's all right. No worries. No harm, no foul. Right after we get EFG back here for ass claps, and then we also get. Uh, some words. So one thing I want to talk about too is the proxy ward. Ooh, the proxy ward. Nobody gets this, and I'm so angry that nobody gets this. This ward is a three second slow to everybody in the radius once it hits them, and it is a 10 second. Oh, oops, I ulted. It is a 10 second reveal. So pretty much what that means is like, even if they go invis, my team and I will see them for the next 10 seconds. That's why the proxy ward's so good. And the enemy sees it too as it's blowing up. So you can also use it to actually body block auto attacks because it takes three auto attacks to kill it. Um, that's a little bit more of like a higher level play. Uh, I don't really use it as much to do that. Like I will sometimes here and there. But um, for the most part, like I'm throwing it on the enemy in a team fight. And that slow is really nice. It's an effective slow. It's 20% for three seconds. Like that's huge. Oh, uh, that's a really, really big slow. Uh, here, I I think I was like looking at chat or something like that. I was a little bit lost. I accidentally took the red. You know, we were we we're, we're kind of like a little crazy after that little FG call. We're kind of like goofing off a little bit. So and we, we do do some goofy things this game that almost end up causing us the game. Uh, one will come up here eventually, and you're gonna be like, "What's going on?" But uh, here we're just sieging the right phoenix, which is really good, right? Because right phoenix is, is always one of the best phoenixes to siege. And the reason for that is because it's the one that's furthest away from FG. Um, and I'll explain this in a second after we get the siege on the way. But let's go ahead and, and look at this team fight real quick. If uh, if we team fight, looks like we're not team fighting. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get in there a little bit, but we actually have a really good uh, Wukong flank, maybe? No. That's one alt down. Cthulhu ult does make this hard, but we actually did end up getting care on all that, which is really good. I want to make sure this Erlon can't go on my back line uh, as easily uh, either. We end up getting this, but we are dying over there, so we, now we just want to run. We, we don't want to... If we get wiped here, we lose the game. Like, we get we lose the game for sure. They can just run it down mid and or right or whatever the case, and we lose. Um, but looks like we're staying in the fight for some reason, which is really, really bad, in my opinion. XD gets a nice call on the Stewie. We actually do get some kills here. So I know this kind of goes against what I said just now, but this is never like really good. You get the Phoenix and get out. But pretty much like what you want to do is get right Phoenix. That's the main Phoenix you want to get because if you are sieging right Phoenix is the one that's furthest away from FG. So the logic and the theory behind this is that once you get that right Phoenix down and say so you can't end the game for whatever reason, uh, when the next FG is up, then the enemies have to send somebody to split right or like say dual side of the map because that phoenix is down right like the dual side phoenix is down if you just look at the map real quick so it makes it makes it way way harder for them to say defend fg um while there's fire minions pushing out because those fire minions will do a lot of damage to the titan like they do a lot of damage to the titan so that's why it's always like in your best interest to get that side phoenix so that's why we 
kind of go over there and get that Phoenix first. Um, if you get the solo side Phoenix, it's not nearly as good. In fact, sometimes like when I lose solo side Phoenix, I just kind of shake it off. I'm like, ah, whatever. I don't really care. Um, obviously, you know, you don't want to lose any Phoenixes, but if you are going to lose a Phoenix, if you were to pick a Phoenix to lose, it would be the solo side Phoenix because you can simultaneously like defend FG and that Phoenix at the same time. Be my ass. Can we get him off me? Hello? Huh? We're playing like a little bit up. Um, we're a little bit split out right now, so I don't, I don't want to play too, too far up because we don't know where they're all at. We know Cthulhu. See, look, this is what I mean, by the way, right? Cthulhu does have TP, so he's a soul laner, so he's the one that's supposed to sort of like split push and defend because he can TP back into a fight. But um, he has to defend those. See, look, he just TP behind us, so now Cthulhu's here. That's why it's really important for the soul laner to, to do that if you're playing solo. But nonetheless, it still makes it hard for them to... to to defend um so here this fight was a little weird i honestly think we should just gone to fg here instead of doing a fight like this but this is completely like i don't want to say it's completely fine but like it's not the worst either um get a nice little shell just to make sure ferris kind of gets out of there and xt actually ends up killing the Charon, which is huge i didn't realize he did that much damage to the Charon, so that's big so we can kind of just go back here now. They have two people that are down. Their new alt's down. So I can just sustain us up and we can go on FG. Cthulhu also has no TP. So FG is like definitely the call here. But again, if they like step up, like if, if they get into our faces, like we kill them. Or like we, we don't stick on FG, like we have to go kill them. And I'm going to position here at this little rock. So uh, this is like the effigy. And the effigy is really, really important to kill because the effigy, once you kill it, it makes the fire giant take 15% more damage for about 15 seconds or so. And you, the fr the fire giant can actually friendly fire the effigy. So that's why as support, when you tank, you want to go towards that like towards that effigy. Now that will spawn when the fire giant has about 85% or less of its HP remaining. Um, and then you want to make the effigy just sort of like friendly fire it essentially, like hit it. But that means that like the enemy also does 15% more damage to it, right? Not just your team. So you kind of have to... Um, I kind of look at that a little bit. We end up getting this Phoenix, which is good. We just want to make sure we live, though. Um, but we end up killing Stewie, which is huge. And... Dude, Cthulhu is... Cthulhu Kara, I mean, this is crazy, man. Like, this is so hard to fight. Both my carries are dead. But Tuba just does so much. Tuba's the Wukong. Tuba just does so much damage on the Wukong there. It kind of, like, saves us a little bit. Um... But man, oh man, dude, Cthulhu is actually just insane right now. So, Soul Lane is the best role in the game right now, in my opinion. It is, like, just the best role in the game. Like, it does so much damage, so much sustain. Being a tank right now is really, really fun. Like, support and solo is just so fun to do both. Uh, here, we're, we're kind of just taking a silly fight. This, like, there's, like, nothing to be had here. This is just for entertainment, right? Like, <laughs> We're just being stupid. I'm getting all my cooldowns back because I'm picking up all these seeds. Like, look at all these CDs. We're, we're about to have med back up, too. Like, this is just silly, man. This is just so silly. Oh, how, how do we not, like, pull that care on there? That's huge. Or that's not huge, but we should pull them. End up getting the Phoenix, though. And now we just want to back up. I'm, I'm watching these spawn timers as well, or I'm trying to at least. Hachi just spawned. And so, like, we, we really want to get the hell out of here. But looks like we keep going for this. Um, I was being a little goofy, too, and I didn't go for this because I was having too much fun. So, admittedly, like, a lot of this is also on me. Uh, but we end up killing the Hachi again. I have my ult again because of these damn seeds. This is crazy. Like, this character is insane, bro. You guys have to try out Sylvanas. Like, I didn't choose a Sylvanas game for no reason. Like, this character is awesome. <laughs> like, that was absolutely just a, a fun turn of events. But... Here we want to back up, um, or at least I'm going to back up here, and I think I get a 3k pot soon, so. Tuba actually, is he going back for the Phoenix? Oh, he is. He blinks on it. Guys, the, the EFG buff is insane. Like, so you get 100 magical power from EFG, and I, I forgot how much physical. I think it's around 70 or so. But you also get 40% increased da damage to structures. So, like, Phoenixes and Towers, you do 40% more damage to them. And on top of that, you also, um, on and you get sustain. But on top of that, too, you also remove 75% of backdoor protections from structures. And if you guys don't know what backdoor protections are, um, you know how, like, when you go up and hit a structure, you, you barely do any damage to it. But if you have minions, oh, here it is right now. Um, 
it looks looks like it's 65 uh, physical power. But uh, if you have minions that walk into it, you do like double the damage, and that's because towers have backdoor protections, and minions remove all of it. So EFG removes about 75%. So minions remove 100%, EFG removes 75% of it. Um, also, okay, this was a little goofy. Um, I actually almost cost us the game here because I end up dying if we're into a bad fight. A viewer was asking me about it, like looking at it, and I was, I was kind of looking at it, and I kind of like AFK explaining it. Um, and <laughs> we got forced into a really, really bad fight. <laughs> And so, like, th this is this is 100% all me. I actually thought we were going to lose right here. I was like, damn, dude, we just lost. But we had three Phoenixes down, and their Titan was just getting chunked. Their Titan, like, you just see me in the corner like, oh, no, man. Oh, no. Tuba says, like, you idiot or something like that in game chat. We actually would have hard lost this game right then and there, all because of me. But we have so we have three Phoenix waves going into the Titan. And those things will absolutely obliterate Titan. And uh it looks like their their uh Titan is like one HP too, because like they had to defend, they weren't defending as much. So that's actually really, really good. So then we're all just like, hey, look, Dashboard did a great play. Woohoo. But um once we once we spawn here, obviously we just kinda like wanna go back to EFG. They should try to take a fight here, I think. If we get an EFG, it's just over. But they also need to defend. So Hachi's actually all the way over there. So now, like, we can just do this. Um, they're they're pretty, like, spread thin now. And if they do hop on FG, we are not sticking to it. You want to fight. Like, you want to fight because they're spread super thin. We know Hachi's not here. He could take Teleporter over. But looks like they're coming over here. So we, we need to go ahead and fight this. And that's exactly what we choose to do. We hop off. Um, Cthulhu's over here. Next to my carries, I want to go. I want to funnel back to the carries, and I just want to heal them. Like that's all I want to do. I'm healing them. I'm meting my Ryzen. I'm tuing them best I can. Get my cooldowns up. Got them with the shield. Cthulhu ult should be done pretty soon as well. And the second it's done, we ult. But of course, we we ult too soon. <laughs> but um, okay, cool. We got the new ult, which is huge. My carries still alive. My carries are dead right there, by the way. If I'm not back there again for like the third time. Um, so this, this is why it's so important for me to position with them. End up killing them. After we get about two kills or three kills here, we know the game's just over. Uh, they know the game's over. They're probably saying GG. That was a really good juke by him, actually. But, like, we know the game's just over at this point. And um, so th this is pretty much coffins for them. But I just want to, like, kind of say that this, this kind of game is just really, really important. I think it comes down to, like, this game in particular comes down to just how much a support can do. Because I, I was doing a lot this game, right? I like keeping everybody alive and whatnot. But how much the support can do and how good healing is right now. Like, if we don't have healing this game, we definitely lose it, I think. And um, really, like, how to position with Sylvanas. <clears throat> this is how you, this is how you want to position, like, almost every single game with them. Uh, in my opinion, you, you, you really want to position with your carries. You're just keeping them alive for so long. You're just healing them. And it's just completely wild. So um, I'll go ahead and leave you guys with that. And, you know, we can go ahead and look at the stats. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Um, and I'll, you know, comment in the, in the comment section if you want to see more stuff like this. I, I would love to do more like this and just kind of, like, teach you guys, you know, what I'm thinking, show you guys what I'm thinking. So hopefully it'll better, like, improve, like, how you guys play the game and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, we did do about 30k healing this game. So this was kind of insane. Like, this was an insane Sylvanas game. That's wild. That's absolutely wild. But. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya.